said, praise the Lord. Let's say it again. Praise the Lord. Without further ado, if you'll keep your mind right on God, we're going to bring our minister of the evening to the pulpit. I believe the Holy Ghost is going to move in a miraculous way. Will you feel after God? Will you yield to what you're feeling? Amen. Brother O.R. Foss, Houston, Texas, and my, what a privilege to have him here tonight to bring to us the word of the Lord. God bless you, Brother Foss. Thank you, Brother Hill. Praise the Lord, everybody. You that have your Bibles, I want you to open them with me. Let's go back into the book of Ecclesiastes again. We read last night from chapter 8. Tonight I want to move over into the 11th chapter. And I'd like to read verse 9. And then we will go into Ecclesiastes ver chapter 12. And read verses 13 and 14. Notice the reading of the word of the Lord. Rejoice, O man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The conclusion of the matter is this. Young or old, rich or poor, regardless of your station in life, you have a date with God. No matter where you came from, no matter where you think you are going, you are going to have a date with God. And I want to talk to you tonight from a subject. I used this last week in our church at home. A date with destiny. Not until I called home at about ten minutes after seven. I'd wrestled with God about this message all afternoon. And when I called home about 10 after 7, these preachers know what I'm talking about. Some little things happen. You're listening. You want a confirmation that God will tell you what His will is. And unbeknowings to my darling, precious wife, she gave me the key that unlocked my heart for this service tonight. Might tell you that I'm thrilled about being here. She also told me that last night, tremendous service at home, five brand new people baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is precious. It's not who you are. It's not where you are. And I feel that sweet, sweet spirit here tonight. You didn't come here by accident. There's a reason you're here. 
And there's somebody that has a date with destiny tonight. Lord, I ask you to unlock our hearts as we stroll through the corridors of your word. We're just mortal men. But God, as you come and walk through the corridors of our heart, you're the creator of all things. You know all things. Be with us. Touch us now, we pray. We'll give you the honor and the praise and the glory. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> you were to look up the word destiny in your Webster's Dictionary you would find this statement destiny that which determines events said of either a supernatural agency or of necessity that which determines events it is said of a supernatural agency or of necessity I believe tonight that I would be correct in saying that there comes a time in everybody's life that we hold the answer to it all in our hands left up to us that if we make a mistake it will be the greatest mistake that we have ever made but if we do it right Everything is going to turn out all right. Some people seem to call destiny luck. Some call it the providence. Some things always happen to certain people. Have you ever noticed it? I'm sure that David was thinking in these terms when he made the statement that my footsteps almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Sometimes destiny deals with us in a way that is hard for us to understand. I want to God that there was a way for us to know tonight exactly what is going on in this building. But there are things happening that you cannot see. I believe that we're encompassed about by a cloud of witnesses. Somehow if God could Open our eyes like the prophet prayed for the young man. The young man thought there's no use in us going any further. But the prophet said, Lord, open his eyes. 
And when he looked, the hills were filled with chariots of fire. The heavenly host. When the battle seemed almost useless, when he was made to see, he suddenly turned around and said, Oh, greater are they that are with us than our enemies. Did you feel that walk by you just a moment ago? Somewhere, angels are standing, folded wings, looking over this audience tonight. Oh, I know you don't believe me, but that doesn't change it. I watched on two different occasions. I watched angels walk into our church. I may not ever see it again, but I saw it that time. wasn't dressed in uh, snow white kind of a off white gray not a real gray but a white gray maybe that's the way I would explain it ordinary build ordinary size walked into the back of our church walked around when we would praise the Lord they would praise him the whole time that I was preaching just moved in and out of the service I wonder if God would anoint our eyes tonight I wonder what we'd see in this building hallelujah hallelujah I do not believe that you came here by accident it was ordained of God that you be here tonight and that this trio sang like they sang and that I preach what I'm fixing to preach to you tonight how many times have you Brother Hill didn't know that he was talking to me. Didn't have any idea what I was preaching tonight when he was talking to me. But how many times has angels of destiny sat in the church and waited for you to make up your mind? they done everything they could do to help you. Everything they could do to reach you. And you still failed to do what you knew you ought to do. Mm -hmm. Only to see you walk away. Not you, but others. And never return. You know, God speaks to us in a lot of ways. And God taught me a lesson, and I've tried to be sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. Because one time, He tried to talk to me, and I couldn't hear Him. You know, I didn't understand what He was saying. I was about to be broken. I was about to be crushed. And He was telling me. But I wasn't able to hear it. Destiny had a date. September 12, 1964. On a freeway. Coming home from a singing. A red and white Chevrolet. Left the freeway. 
struck the exit pole. The singers behind him saw the lights go up, saw them go out. When they got there, when they got there, the car looked like it was going to burn. They opened the door, pulled him out. The man said, all I could think of, Brother Foss, was, are you saved? And he said, holding him in my lap, I asked him, son, are you saved? He said, a smile come across his face. 12.42. My phone rang an hour and a half later. Little did I realize when I reached and picked up a phone. Destiny. A crushing. A grinding. Brother, I, I feel like telling you this tonight. And I don't know why. I'd, uh, I got things written down here, but this is not in it. And my children heard me preach this sermon at home, and I did not go into this. But unless you have been to your Gethsemane, you will never be the preacher that God wants you to be. You hear me? And once you have been broken... You will love your brother like you've never loved him before. There will be no envy. There will be no hatred. There will be no strife. The minute a man walks to a pulpit, he doesn't have to preach long until you can tell he's been broken. I don't ever want to get away from that. You see, when I answered that phone, they told me that it was my boy just filled with the Holy Ghost a few weeks before. This boy here was just a lad. He tried to tell me about it, but I couldn't hear him. When we went to youth camp, David walked to my car. The last thing he told me, Honey, Daddy will never forget you. Just a 12-year-old boy. Put your head in the door. Talking about his 18-year-old brother. Daddy, prayed Daryl through this time. Oh, he was an athlete. He loved to play ball. We went to youth camp. So highly competitive. My wife would tell me, honey, don't put so much emphasis on sports. I was a pitcher. He was a catcher. So many times he's come out from behind that plate just a game. Walk up and tell me, Daddy, settle down. You pitch to me. Not to say, son, it's just a game. He said, I know it, but I want to win it. My buddy, David come. He couldn't go because it was senior camp. David hung in the door of that car. Daddy, we won't have Daryl another year. Please pray him through. And this boy that sang for you tonight fasted and prayed. Every time I called home, his mother said he hung there by the phone waiting. Did Daryl get the Holy Ghost tonight? Hey, I'm telling you, honey. I feel it in this place. Some of us is looking destiny in the face tonight. Oh, God! He sang in the choir. Beautiful singer. Brother Merrill Ewing was directing the choir. In that huge Texas tabernacle in the choir loft, up way high, high was a light shining down on the pulpit. Daryl that night had on a white robe and he was singing words like this. Soon I'll be crossing death's chilly waters and no more this life I'll see. Oh, and the power of God was such a way that it was different than anything I ever saw or I ever felt. I watched him take 
the robe off. The song wasn't over. Swung it over his shoulder and started off the platform. Merle Ewan reached out and got him and said, Daryl, tonight is your night. Off of the platform he went. Song wasn't over. But later he told me these words. He said, Daddy, first time in my life I ever felt out of place in a Pentecostal church. But the next time I seen him, they found him back under the platform, down on his face. And the next time I saw him, he was speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave him the utterance. Something tonight, either a supernatural power or necessity is shaping your destiny. Oh, God. Give me just a minute here. Oh, God. Destiny. How far are you away from it? Some men seem to be men of destiny. Everything goes wrong. If anybody's car breaks down, it's theirs. If anybody gets laid off, it's them. If anybody's kids take some measles, it's his. If anybody gets sick, it's that family. They seem to be destined for things that's bad. Other men seem to prosper no matter what they do. Everything they touch becomes instant success. Money. Money. Nothing ever happens wrong. Nothing ever goes wrong with them. Everything is all right. You see, we are creatures that are somehow determined by things that go on around us Ephraim according to Hosea refused to give up her idols and she was going to become a child of destiny God labored with her he pled with her the prophets prayed for her they reached for her they cried for her. They prophesied to her. Until finally God. Out of a heart. Of necessity. He looked down at the prophet. And said let her alone. I have given her up. Hey my friend. I wonder what the angels are saying tonight when that gentle spirit touches your heart and touches your soul. Somehow the angel of God is standing there and begging, listen, be careful what you say. Don't make the wrong decision. You know, it kind of reminds me of the way we work in the altar. I've watched people get there and they've worked and you get right to the Holy Ghost. And they'll say, come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Somehow I feel the angels tonight are seated close to some of you. And that angel knows what you're about to say. To some of you, they're saying, come on, make it. That's right, do it. To others, they're saying, no. No, no. Because we are dealing in a spirit 
of destiny tonight. I really don't know where I'm going with this. So I'm just going to follow the Lord. Could it be that I'm preaching the final message? That somebody in this audience will ever receive? What about it, young man? Your heart filled with rebellion. Oh, Brother Hill, I was talking to you from my heart today. You preachers seem to feel that you are a special secluded group and that your children has got a corner on God. But it's not the drug addict that walks in that's hard to reach. It's not the man that knows nothing about Pentecost that's hard to reach. It's not the man out of the gutters of sin that's hard to reach. But I'll guarantee you some of you men have got children that's as hard as the side of that pulpit tonight. And you can't reach them with anything. There's nothing can touch them. There's some of you saints been in the church for many years, but your kids cannot be moved. There's some of these children raised in a Pentecostal church, but they sit there hard as nails. I listened to a young man tell me. He said, because I couldn't play sports, because I couldn't do the things I wanted to do, it made me hate the church. I'm not talking about a boy that didn't know. I'm talking about a boy raised around the altar. I'm talking about a boy that was rocked to sleep to the songs in the church, laid on a Pentecostal pallet and slept for so long, and then look at you and tell you the things that you denied me of makes me hate the church. Oh God. God, sir, if you ever hear me tonight, you better hear what I'm saying. When God looked at Ephraim and he talked to that prophet, he said, you've prayed enough. You've cried enough. I want you to stop it. And you let him alone because I have given him up. Honey, if God does that to you tonight, you know, you may not appreciate it, but every time your old pastor walks to the pulpit, every time your shepherd walks to that desk, I heard one man speak about my dad. He said, I wish you would stop crying. You look so ugly. When you cry, but all the tears running down his face was diamonds in the treasure of God. You may not like the way this old man preaches to you. I tell you, if God takes the man of God out of your life, you will die before daybreak. Honey, that's just what I feel here tonight. You better hope that God doesn't make a date with you and tell that old man, quit praying, quit praying, quit praying. Don't pray for him. Don't talk to him. It's not the first time God told Samuel, when are you going to stop praying for Saul? You know that I gave him up. But you seem to think that you can go on. You see, some of us are privileged to sit in the church for many years. But I've seen some that only had one night. One night. One night. 
just one night. A date with destiny. Brother Foss, my lot in life was not a good one. I didn't get to do a lot of things. Let me tell you about a dreamer. He dreamed. He dreamed about sheaves that he went and gathered. His brothers gathered sheaves. But somehow when the sheaves were brought in, he stood up above all the rest of them. And those sheaves bowed down. And when Joseph told his brethren Reuben and Dan and Gad, and he told them about his dream, it made them mad. But you see, Joseph was a man of destiny. Oh, because he had a dream in his heart. They said, we'll sell him into slavery. They killed a lamb and put the blood on a coat of many colors and carried it back to the father and said he fell among the animals, the beasts of the field, tore him apart. And this is all that we've got left. But in true words, he was on top of no camel, tied, going to a foreign country because I love God. Why, Joseph? I don't know. In a dungeon, in a prison, started gaining favor. Everything looked well. Everything looked good. Potiphar put him up in his house. He began to grow in stature. He became the man in command of everything that Potiphar had. But the Bible said he was good to look upon. And Potiphar's wife fell in love with him. Honey, don't you ever forget. God knows the slightest secret thought that comes into your heart. Potiphar was gone. His wife said, Joseph, you're a handsome man. Come into my bedchamber. Nobody will know. Joseph, suddenly when that happened, something in him swelled up. It began to move in his heart. He said, how can I? Hot Joseph, you've been sold into slavery. You're in a foreign country. Nobody will know anything about it. Do that. Have a good time. Go on. But sir, remember this one thing. When you transgress the law of God, you establish a date with destiny that you cannot get away from. And Joseph looked up and said, How can I commit this wickedness against my God? Ran and left his coat you ever figure out the price of that coat? Prison. How much is the coat in a dungeon? A sin I did not commit. A man of destiny. I'm talking to you and I really don't know who you are but before it's through I will. I'll be able to walk through this audience and put my hand on you. The Lord don't leave a preacher not knowing what he's doing. You ask him, are you preaching to me? You better believe I'm preaching to you tonight. Oh, yes, sir. You see, just because things haven't been well, you can't take offense at God and say that I can't do it because somewhere God has got it waiting for you. And destiny will pay for everything. When you begin to look at men and you begin to look at what they're doing, Adam and his date with God, the crowning creation of God's hand, he made him. He wanted to love him. He wanted to be with him so much. He told him, Adam, every day, I'll come talk to you. And in the cool of the day, the Lord would come. But this day, something happened to him. It wasn't like it used to be. 
He feared the meeting with God. He feared hearing the rustling of the leaves. He feared hearing the voice of God echo through the garden. He's coming today. Yeah, Adam, he's coming today. Oh, but some of you don't believe that he's coming today. You've got it tucked back in your little gizzard that you've got a long time to wait, honey. I'm telling you, there is a date with destiny that you better wake up and get a hold of tonight. You better wake up and understand that you don't have long. Honey, do you believe he's coming soon? You really do? Do you? How many of you really believe he's coming soon? Let me see your hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. I don't want you to answer me, Brother Hancock. But I want to talk to you just a minute. Did you preach Sunday night? You preached at your church. Did you preach, really, like you would have preached if God would have told you this is the last sermon you'll ever get to preach to this church? Hey, I'm talking to you. I'm saying you don't believe it. Any of you men got unsaved children? Any of you? You don't have to raise your hand. Any of you got unsaved children tonight? And you tell me that you believe that he may come tonight? You didn't fast today? You probably didn't pray today? Think about it a little while. If you really thought he was coming tonight, you wouldn't let me get through with this message. You wouldn't let me finish this sermon. You'd be going home. You'd be going in. You'd wake up that boy. You'd wake up that girl. Honey, get up. We got to pray. My God, we got to pray. Why, Mama? Why? Let me sleep. Why? Because tonight, is the night that the Lord is going to come back, but because you don't believe it. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you really believed that tonight was the night you are going to have your date with God, some of your kids is in the football stadium tonight. You wouldn't even let me get through. You'd go over there and run through the crowd. You'd start looking, where are they at? Where are they? My God, where are you at, John? You'd run out on the 50-yard line. John! Honey, 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 Mama's got to find you. You don't believe the rapture. Is coming tonight. I'm sorry. And I keep saying that. It's not an apology. But I'm going to say it to you. Last night, I know it was crowded. People in the altar, they had to ask somebody, would you come and pray? I don't know who it was. I need 20 men. Do you remember the question? That's not enough. Come on, a few more. The second time, that's still not enough. The third time, I need 20 men to go to the prayer room. That's not enough. You tell me that you believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon. I'm telling you that I don't believe that you believe that. We couldn't keep you out of the altar. We couldn't keep you from praying. You wouldn't let me preach. You wouldn't let them sing. You wouldn't let anything go on if you knew that destiny tonight was going to be the night.
I wished I'd have stayed at home tonight. You better be glad you didn't, sir. You better pray that something happens that'll wake you up. What do you mean? You come to the church lukewarm, unconcerned. Don't you know that that's dangerous? No, I don't believe that. Well, I'm sorry that you don't because you need to believe it. And I may preach something here these preachers don't believe, but that's tough. I'm going to preach it anyway, and I won't charge you for it. We get in the middle of what we're in right now. There's no telling what's going to happen here tonight. I want to tell you that. I feel something in the air. There's something about to happen in this place tonight that you haven't seen in a long, long, long time. And if you're not where you ought to be, you better be getting there in a hurry. When these preachers walk up and lay hands on the head of a man that's devil possessed, drug demons, cigarette demons, sex devils, rebellious devils, these preachers lay hands on them and rebuke that spirit. Where do you think that spirit's going? Do you think it's going to dwell in the air? Looking. Looking. Honey, it's dangerous for you to be in this place tonight with the kind of spirits that's here and your heart not full of the Holy Ghost. When the Lord rebuked the devils out of legion, they said, don't let us dwell in the air. Let us go into the swine. I believe tonight that it's entirely possible that these spirits of hatred that comes out of a sinner could fall into the heart of a lukewarm preacher that could fall into the heart of a lukewarm saint that drug demon that you have never had any problem with could come out of a man and settle in you and suddenly there'd be an agonizing glowing firing burning something happened to me sir you shouldn't have been at a Pentecostal church with your heart like it is you need to get under the blood tonight I guess tomorrow night I'll have to preach the sermon I started to preach but I'm off into something else tonight oh listen sir listen it's dangerous you see, when the Spirit of the Holy Ghost starts moving like it's moving right now, there's people in this audience. You don't have to look for them. I know where they are now. You're about to choke to death. You're getting hot. You can't breathe because the Spirit that's inside of you is becoming troubled. It's trying to do something to stop you from making the move that you need to make. But, sir, walk out of here. And you walk into the presence of hell and everything. How long has it been since you've seen a man flop on the floor like a fish and vomit all over your beautiful carpet? Oh, I guess I'm a little old-fashioned for you. But when this church gets like it ought to be, you're going to see miracles like you've never seen before. You're going to see people set free like you've never seen before. But until you wake up and shake yourself, all of these spirits that come out of here, brethren, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
don't wonder my God what happened when that rebellious spirit rises up against you it got it at an altar Oh, God. Oh, God. What am I going to do? Be afraid, not on your life. Greater is he that is within Hallelujah. I believe that we are equal to the occasion tonight. We are men of destiny. Oh, Brother Foss, just because I make a mistake doesn't mean that I'm a man of destiny. Sir, do you really believe the Scripture? I can cite you a man that saw somebody pour oil on Jesus Christ. And when he saw the oil, the spikenard, he simply made a statement. Why was this waste made? Why didn't you sell it? Let's give it to the poor. Jesus looked at him and said, The poor you have with you always. That wasn't much. Judas Iscariot didn't do very much. He simply gave space to the devil. A man of destiny made a date with God. That devil hired him. Oh, I know you don't believe in devils, but honey, they're here. They're walking up and down these aisles tonight. Been a long time since I felt like I'm feeling now. I'm looking. There's no telling what we're going to see. I was preaching like this one night and I looked in the back door and walking in the back door of our church, I couldn't see the facial expressions. All I could see was the dark, dirty, black-looking thing. You could tell it was a being moved. While I was preaching, I looked at it, walked in the door, walked about where our brother is with the camera, and stood there. just slowly began to dissipate I stopped preaching I told the church I have just seen the angel of death walk into this building oh they didn't believe it they didn't believe that but within six weeks time five of the strongest men in my church seated right where it stopped died Untimely deaths. My brother-in-law, one of them. Just... You don't believe it? I feel that spirit. It may materialize in this place tonight. Brother Foster, you're trying to scare us. No, I'm trying to make you wake up to what's really happening to you. Space to the devil. Judas! What made you do it? Get it out of your heart! But you see, he carried the money bag. He carried the money. The devil knows where you're weak. He knows what to send your way. He knows how to tempt you. He knows. He knows. He knows. Your only defense 
is under the blood. Oh God, under the blood. Under the blood when things are not going well, what do you do? Where do you go? When trouble comes, what do you say? How do you handle it? Brother Ham, ask me a question. Brother Foss, did you know a certain man? I said, yes, sir, I met him when I was just a boy. Trouble struck his church. Didn't know what to do. Devils come in. Huge church. Bigger than this church, my church, both of them put together. When I was just a lad of a boy, go there, 1,500 in attendance on Sunday night. It was a thrill of my young heart to go and listen to that choir sing. An old black blind woman, they used to get up and start a song instead of a testimony in the North Country. They'd just stand up and go to singing. This old black blind woman got up and started. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, but honey, it wasn't long then. She changed it and said, in this dark world of mine, I'm going to let it shine. All those things made an indelible impression on me. When she finished her song, she started her testimony. She said, I can't go very fast. Many have started and passed me up. But she said, I've met some of them coming back. That church rocked with trouble. Elder G.T. Haywood walked into his office told him don't bother me don't call me don't say anything to me I'm going to be with God and when I've heard from God I'll come out one day passed nothing two days nothing Three days, nothing. Four days, nothing. Sunday, the fifth day, church packed and jammed. Where is our bishop? Alone with God. They sit there waiting. Hours went by. Just before dark settled in, come walking out, out of that office, and walked to the platform. Told him we'll have service in just a little while. I've heard from God. Went back in, fixed his hair, straightened his tie, walked by the organ. Hell was against him. Demons were fighting him. He told the organist, start the music. Gave her the key. He stepped to the pulpit. Here was his message. I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows. Hallelujah. 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 Honey, let me tell you. In times like this, you need to be under the blood. When destiny stalks your pathway. You need to be under the blood. Hallelujah. 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 Judas, you ought to run. You need to run to him. Uh -uh. Date with destiny. Money, bag of silver, coins rattling, talking to Caiaphas. I know where he's at. That's not enough. His bargain. It's not enough. Judas, my God, 
don't do it. You said, Brother Foster, if I'd have been Judas, I wouldn't do it. Honey, if you will do God like you're doing him tonight, you would do worse than Judas is doing. Hallelujah. 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 How about it, Judas? 30 pieces of silver, yeah. But you see, his date wasn't with him in a garden. He wept. He cried. He begged. Oh, I've betrayed innocent blood. He throwed money on the floor. I want to get out of it. But you see, somehow God had lifted his hand off of him. Sought it carefully with tears. But the Bible said he found no place of repentance. Judas, what is your date? Running down a road, looking for a tree, rope in his hand. What you gonna do? Where are you going, Judas? You see, hell don't only want to consume you. It wants to destroy you. It's not satisfied with you doing just a little bit. But it wants to absolutely control everything there is about you. I don't know why, but I've got to come back to this. My fellow preacher, if there's one ounce of jealousy in your heart, if there's one ounce of envy in your soul, if there's one ounce of hatred toward your brother, it'll eat you like a cancer. And after a while, you'll be hunting a place to destroy yourself. And hell will be after you like it's never been. I don't know why I'm saying it, Brother Ham. I don't know you men, but I'm telling you one thing. I feel something. You need to clean out your heart and spirit. Yeah, Brother Hill, you can, you can take me to the airport tonight if you want to. Do you hear me? This is not going to rise above you. No need in me preaching to them like I am until you get right. Isn't it strange that a man been with God walking down a street looking for a lamb? All it started with was a thought. A date with destiny. around his neck crawled up fastened it to a limb Judas I can't touch him anymore I can't reach him anymore I hate to tell you this but I was talking to my boy the day before I left Gary at home mixed up trouble he looked at me and said God had never done anything for me Honey, I'm not talking about somebody I don't know. My boy, March the 22nd, in a Jeep, brand new, hit a hole in a pavement four feet deep, no seat belt, no top. The Jeep started flipping down the pavement. Thirteen thousand dollars in a Jeep. Four-wheel drive centers begging him, when the car show comes to Houston, let us 
show it with our name on it. That Jeep, when they called me, they brought that Jeep to my house. I looked at it. Gary at the hospital. The insurance company came. They said, Reverend, do you want it? I said, well, what do you want for it? $250 is all it's worth. And he's still alive tonight, seating it, seated, seated at the table. Before I left, I said, son, don't tell me God had never done nothing for you. Somehow, while that Jeep was in the air, he put you in the fold of his arm. And that Jeep flipped and flipped and flipped. And somewhere... Oh, honey, I'm preaching to you tonight. I didn't know I was going to open that part of my heart. I talked to him before church. Where are you going? I'm going to hear the Lenny Wolf Trio. Daddy's praying for you. Have you been praying? Yeah, Daddy, yeah. Oh, but listen, sir. You need to wake up. You're going to be searching for a limb somewhere. You're going to have it in your hand. you got a date with destiny. Tied around the limb. Judas, are you going to jump? But see, hell had already took him. When he jumped, the Bible said his bowels gushed out into the streets. He stood there, hung there, Muscles jerking. Away from God. Honey, some of you are so close. I know I'm not supposed to cry while I preach. I know that. Forgive my tears, but when you're as close as you are, you need to be careful because something supernatural is recording destiny tonight. Horoko Shama Hodor Yandaro Mohaya. I feel that I need to come to a close with this. I suddenly felt that I've come to a point that I need to bring it to a close. Did you ever stop to think how close you are to destiny? Two pair of headlights on the way home coming towards you. When it goes by, you'll feel the rock of the car. Destiny. Two feet away. Whew. Who knows, sir? Seated on a bar stool somewhere. A guided missile being loaded. Drinking his booze. Fixing to go out and get in a car. About the same time you get in yours to leave this service. The devil will have to turn on his ignition. Weaving in and out of the traffic, searching for the highway. You know where you're going, but by some uncanny spirit. He goes by the bridges, he makes the curb. Could it be that I'm talking to you? the last time I want every one of you to look at me you see these hands 
I've got to leave Boonville with clean hands. You're not going to tell God, I didn't tell you. I'm telling you. I'm washing my hands tonight. You're headed for a date with destiny. How about it, lukewarm child? How about it, lukewarm mother? Well, I don't appreciate you talking to me like this, Brother Foss. And here we are. Make your date tonight. But some of us settled it a long time ago. We're going to meet him. But it's not going to be in a blinding crash. It's not going to be in crashing glass and twisted steel. But some of us is going to hear the gentle sound of a trumpet. We're going to meet him. Every eye closed. Every head bowed. I'd like for you young people, you people that seated on these front seats, don't anybody look. You don't have to look. I want you all to get up and fold up your chairs, carry them to the wall. You boys can just make your way up here on the platform, stand over here. You folks, find your place to stand along here somewhere. Just this front row is all I need. I don't want anybody to say anything. I want you to think about it. Some of you have been in this more years than I'm old. Wouldn't it be a shame? For you to miss it all. Some of you, this is your first night. It's your second night. But you may never pass this way again. You see, Jesus went by the land of the Gadareans. He never went back there again. And he may never touch you again. I'm almost afraid to open this altar because I haven't penetrated some of you yet. And I'm almost afraid for you to look in the face of God and spit in His face and say, let me alone. Because He may really do it. My God, if you ever prayed, I'm asking you to pray. I really don't know how to open this altar. Get that chair.
Brother Hill. I want you to go down by the back door. I want you to stand there. This is your church. Brother Hancock, I want you to go about middle ways. And I want you to stand there. Elder Hill, you're a daddy to all of us. Men like you and my old dad made us what we are. I want you to stand right in front of this desk tonight. Brother Kirk, I want you to go about middle ways right over here. My brother, I don't know your name. I want you to go and get through and stand right over there about middle ways. Brother Ham, my brother here, you feel like standing up? Brother Ham, I want you to come over here by the altar and by this door. My brother, I want you right over there by those chairs. These men know you. You pastors, don't be afraid. You may never get a chance to reach for that one that's close to you tonight. The devil's already telling you, well, if I say anything, they won't like me anymore. Don't believe it. God's going to prize open the heart. We're not going to let hell capture them tonight. We're not going to let hell put a noose in their hand. We're not going to let them look for a bridge. They're not going to be looking for a limb. We're going to point them to Calvary. I want these other preachers to stand up. I don't want anybody to look. I want everybody else with their eyes closed. And I want you men to look over this audience with me tonight. And if you ever prayed, I want you to pray. God needs to talk to you. They're out there. Hell's going to them.